finished work today. What God has said is done. He has promised. He watches his word. It will not return void today. No fear. No worry. No concern. Nothing but trust. Nothing but love. Nothing but belief today. Lord, we thank you that it is finished and it is done. Oh, let your heart be encouraged this morning. Let your heart be encouraged today that God... Get the word today. You ready? Father, we're just thankful. And Holy Spirit, I ask you, even as we get into your word today, open up our hearts to see Jesus. And Holy Spirit, I thank you that whatever the need is, that we receive right where we are, even online today. All of you online, right where you are, at home, driving in the car, wherever you may be right now, that, Father, there is no distance in the Spirit. Whatever your will is, we receive it. Say this with me. Say, God, here I am. I open up my heart. I'm ready to receive. Say, in Jesus' name. Let's give him praise in advance right where you are. Give him praise. We have been talking about this today. Pressure is my partner. And how many of you have already been challenged and encouraged through this message? I mean, we've been talking about what it is to have stubborn faith. We've got to be stubborn about the promises of God. Sometimes you've got to take a stand because it's not just going to be given to you. There's things that are trying to take what God has already promised. Well, they don't have no right. When you realize who you are, you realize the power that lives in your life. You're not just going to tolerate a second best life. You're not going to tolerate second best thinking. But you begin to rise up to the occasion. And, and, and this is what we've been talking about, that pressure. See, when, when, when Christ is our faith, when he is our process, when we have a foundation of Jesus Christ in our life, when pressure comes, pressure, instead of breaking us, pressure becomes the partner that pushes us into growth. Pressure becomes that place that reveals who we really are. Amen. Let's look at our, our text today, Proverbs 24.10, and this is where we've been. I'm going to share something today that is revolutionary. For us as believers, that we under pressure have the power to deal with it. Amen. And look what Proverbs says, 24.10. If you fall under pressure... Your strength is too small. Now, I love Proverbs, if you ever read Proverbs, because, I mean, it's just straight up in your face. And I love that. So, you know, there, there's a chapter for every day of the week, every day of, of the month. And so usually what I would do is read a Proverbs a day, and, and they're good. This is one of the ones that really has always spoken to me because, when I went through times and I failed, I went through times and I made the wrong choices. If I was really honest about it, I, I, I would ask this question. You know, if, if I fell under pressure, the Bible says, your strength is too small. And, and so I would have to ask the question, why does pressure have that effect on me? Why does that opinion from somebody affect me so negatively? Why is it that when a financial challenge comes up, you know, I can believe for this, I can believe for that, but when this ain't going right, you know, that thing in my life, we talked about that thing. Each of us has, has a that thing. When that thing comes up, why does it have the power over my thinking? Why could it? change the way I believe just like that. And, and this is the question that I would ask myself. And I, and I think that this is what we've come to, even through all that we've been going through, especially through this last year. The pandemic, the, the, the racial injustice that rose up, the presidential, I've never, I haven't seen a presidential campaign 
that heightened. I mean, everything was heightened. But you know what we found out? That pressure is the great revealer. That during this year, what really began to happen is, uh, you know, the pressure began to reveal what you really believe about Jesus. You begin to find out what you really believe about yourself, what you really believe about your neighbor. You begin to find out where is your confidence, where is, who do you trust in for happiness. All these things, and that's what pressure will do. Pressure will begin to reveal, but we love this part because when Christ is our process, our faith, our focus is in Christ, pressure actually becomes our partner. Just like, just like many of you have heard the term, you know, the, you put a tea bag, you don't know how strong a tea bag is until you what? Put it in hot water. You don't know. Do you realize that the original quote uh, was from uh, Eleanor Roosevelt and who she was talking about were women? And she said, "When you don't know how strong a woman is until you put her in hot water. You don't know the content. Of a person. Well, you could say that about all of us. Come on, y'all. When when you put the pressure on, the pressure comes up. And so we shouldn't be the ones that be like, my God, you don't want to see the real me. We should be the ones that are like, that's right. The, the pressure's on. Let, let Jesus come on now. Let the Holy Spirit come on now. Let the promises and my confidence come on now. I'm ready for the pressure because I ain't playing this game. I'm not playing a game. I have faith in Jesus. I am founded on the Word of God. So when the pressure comes, and I'm not saying you have to be perfect, because sometimes your initial response, and then you correct it. Whatever it is, we've got to begin to rise up, and that's what we're talking about today. Pressure can only push you in the direction we're already leaning where our faith is already focused. So think about that for a moment. Really, pressure isn't any, you know, it doesn't change you. It just shows you where you're already leaning. And that's why we love, I love a scripture like that. My strength is too small. Ask myself, why does this pressure do this to me? How can it affect me? How can that person affect me and change the way I love, change the way I talk, change the way I live? It shouldn't be. That's where we get stubborn about who we are. That's where when the pressure comes, Jesus rises up on the inside of me. Love rises up on the inside of me. Forgiveness prevails over hatred. Are you here today? Mm, Man. So what we found out is that when you are stubborn about your faith in Christ, stubborn faith translates pressure into praise. And what we find out is praise translates into power. So just like Silas, Paul and Silas were thrown into prison, Right there in the midst of it all, what do they begin to do? They begin to praise God. You know, it's funny because when you preach these things, you're going to be tested. So the other day I was tested. I knew it was coming. <laughs> you start preaching it, and, uh, but it has to be said. God is doing something on the inside of us, and I'm going to preach what God is speaking to me. And immediately, I, I, I know I told uh, Trishel, I said, hey, Trishel, guess what? And so I told her, and she goes, so what was your response? I said, well, Paul and Silas, they started to praise God. You know, that's when you know you're hearing, you're actually, you, if you preach it, live what you preach, amen. You get an opportunity to live what you're preaching. So I remember looking at it and having to deal with some things, and then I took a deep breath. Okay. What am I going to do with this? How do I process this? Right? Immediately begin to thank God in advance. What do we learn? That, that faith calls things before they are so that they will be. 
You start to call what you want in Jesus' name. You tell the mountain where it's going to go. You tell your tomorrow how it's going to look. You tell your financial issue what's going to happen in the in the near future. You tell your body how it's going to feel. You tell the bad news, the good news of Jesus, and begin to shift your faith and shift your circumstance. We realize that as believers, we have been gifted or we've been created Like a thermostat, not a thermometer. What's the difference? A thermometer, all it does is read. It expresses what it feels. It tells you what's going on on the outside. It just reads what's going on around it. But what does a thermostat do? A thermostat changes things the way it wants it to be. And that's why if you're still trying to live like a thermometer, you're you're not happy. Because you're not equipped. God never taught you or, or equipped you to be a thermometer. He never, he never uh, created you just to tolerate or settle for. He created you as a thermostat. He created you as a world shaker. He created you as one that changes things the way it should be. Amen? That's who we are when we have a foundation. So today I want to I wanna continue. I want to develop a healthy process. I want us to develop this. Are you ready for this? Let's continue to build a foundation so that when pressure comes, your response doesn't melt. You don't bow to it. It doesn't break you. But rather, you're able to take pressure and respond to it the way God has purposed it to be responded to. You have the power to change things. And so... The thing that we got to look at, and again, I want to go back, what we begin to see through the pandemic and through the racial injustice, we, we saw it even through the presidential campaign. The one thing that I saw that we shouldn't be seeing is we saw many believers lapse in their faith. There were many believers that were lapsing in their commitment. We begin to lapse in our love towards other people. We begin to lapse into depression. We lapse into, you know, uh, uh, disrespect and hatred like others. We begin to see a lapse in this. And, and, And that's where I really felt like the pressure is really revealing our foundation. And and look it, this is good. It's good because we're going to begin to grow. Here, and we grow through that into who we're going to be. We're going to grow in into a new generation of people. That's why, uh, isn't it interesting, what was accepted a year and a half ago ain't accepted anymore. And much of that change is a good change. It's because God had begun to reveal his grace. He began to reveal his love back in the church. That's one thing that I begin to see is that God is revealing his grace, and it's shifting the world around us. People are having to take recognition of love over hate. People are having to take recognition over faith in God and, you know, take recognition of where is my foundation? What do I really believe about myself? Come on, y'all. Do I really believe in this? Is this something that I believe from the outside? Or am I going to really live it when it really matters? Woo! And so, in a lot of respect, I was thankful for this moment that we went, we, we went through to see so many of us. Really, I look into your life and many of you have grown. Many of you have shifted Yeah, sometimes we can be a little bit uh, upset about certain things that have happened through it. We're saddened by many that that passed. We were saddened by the violence and the things that we saw. I'm saddened by uh, the, the divide between people, even in the political realm. You know, I'm sad to see how brothers and sisters can treat each other differently based on their political party. 
um, you know, and, and I begin to pray and take authority over that, that we need to realign our heart and realize that we are first a child of God. We are first one that loves the way God loves us. We are first one, amen, that, that live from the foundation of what Jesus has done, amen, that we don't fear disease, we fear and we trust in God, hallelujah. We're wise, but not fearful. Amen. There's a difference. And so pressure reveals your process. Pressure came to reveal that. But I got good news for you. Because when God sent Jesus, and he saved us and redeemed us, he embraced us. Look it. And then he sent us out to the world. He didn't send you out on your own. Like many people think, you know, God, we get saved by grace, and then now it's up to you. You better do it right. No, 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 no. The Bible doesn't say that. It says that we've been saved by grace. It also talks about those of us, it says the same grace that you were saved by is the same grace now that you live by. Amen. Grace is not just an entrance fee. It's an eternal life given by Jesus Christ where he didn't just embrace you into a place of love and into a place of forgiveness, but now you live under that environment. You live under the open heavens with God. You live in a place of favor with God. Amen. No matter what the season no matter what's going on around you, what goes on around you does not change what he did on the inside of you. Never. And so here it is. He didn't leave you unequipped. He saved you and then he equipped you. I want to show you in one of theirs, here it is. This is, the, this is the biggest, this is huge, revolutionary when it comes to process. Look what he says. Jesus, Jesus said, John 14. These things I have spoken to you while remaining with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and remind you of all that I said to you. Jesus was saying, remember, this is Jesus speaking. He was saying, look it, I'm going to go to be at the Father. He was, he was telling them, I'm going to die for your sin. I'm going to be resurrected, but I'm going to go to the Father, but I'm not going to leave you alone. I'm going to give you what I call the helper. It is, he is the Holy Spirit that now lives on the inside of you. And all of you, look what it says. Look at the job of the Holy Spirit. Let's see it again, verse 26. But the helper, the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name, look what he does. He will teach you all things. All things. He reveals the word when you're reading the Bible. He reveals and teaches to you the work that Jesus did in your life. He will teach you what God is doing in your life. He will teach you how to deal and process things. And then he says, he will remind you of all that I said to you. Remember, this is Jesus speaking. So what he's saying is the Holy Spirit's mission is he will remind you what Jesus did for you. He will remind you of what God's work is in Christ. He will remind you of who you are in Jesus. Woo! Now this is revolutionary because it's not just about you being on, on your own. It's not just about, because look it, human struggle is a real battle. We have to, we got to deal with this. Human struggle is a real battle, but guess what? Good news, we have a real answer, and his name is the Holy Spirit. He never leaves you. He lives on the inside of you. He was the one that brought salvation and brought the new birth inside. When you accepted Christ, it was the Holy Spirit that came in, and the Bible says that we are born again. We receive a born-again spirit. Amen. So he is there. And then many of you, the Bible says, that we then can receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, 
with the evidence of speaking in tongues. That takes a whole new level because now we are, the Bible calls it baptism in the Holy Spirit. Like you, you, you baptize and now the evidence of that is that you begin to speak in a new language. The Holy Spirit gives you the evidence of speaking in tongues. Jesus said it. He said it. He goes that, that there will be rivers of living water that flow out of you, he said. That he will give you his spirit and out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. That's the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so he gave that to us. He gave him the Holy Spirit to empower us every day. And, And so I want you to catch this because I believe that whether you know the, the the whether you're dealing with sin, whether you're dealing with trauma, whether you're d- dealing with spiritual oppression, what's oppression? It's it's the devil coming in and beginning to oppress you from the outside. Um, a believer cannot be possessed. A believer in Jesus cannot be possessed, no matter what people have said. There is no way. Why? Because the Holy Spirit has brought a new spirit in you. But you can be oppressed from the outside. When somebody gives way to certain things uh, of the enemy, you open yourself up to something, it can begin to oppress you. As a believer, you can still be oppressed, but you got to know your authority. That's where you begin to understand who you are. That's where the Holy Spirit, if you ask him, he'll remind you who you are. You're the righteousness of God. You are justified. You are favored. You are blessed. You are powerful. You are an heir of God, a joint heir with Christ. He will remind you of what you have. Amen. This is important to talk through. I'm talking through this. So whether it is an oppression, maybe it's something physical, physical. In your body. And then we've seen this a lot. Maybe it's psychological. There's been a lot of challenges throughout the pressure. We have seen more mental awareness come because so many, the pressure begin to bring that out, begin to bring out the weakness of the soul. Pressure without God creates chaos. Pressure without God can create chaos. But pressure with God will drive out the wrong thing and will produce. God will be in there with you in the midst of it. And he'll cause you to rise above things that have tried to control you before. He'll begin to cause you to rise above struggle that you've struggled with before. Because he will show you that he is supreme in your life above all those struggles. Jesus is Lord. He is the sheriff on the inside of you. Come on, y'all. No room for two sheriffs there. Come on. So this is the thing that I've seen is I've seen the church, which I, I feel is such a powerful thing, is that through all that we've faced and through the revelation of God's grace and love to the church, that we have seen the church begin to embrace struggle and not try to say just because somebody's struggling that God's not in their life. We're not saying just because you're going through it doesn't mean that you're not still righteous. It doesn't mean that you're, that, you know, you, God's not in your life. Amen. I mean, that's the, and the world will teach you that. The world will teach, and, and it's been doing a good job by, by saying, you know, these things are common. Just because you go through darkness doesn't mean that, you know, you're, you're weird or you're off. It just, it's common. Depression is something we've seen that so many people deal with. But guess what? As a believer in Jesus, we have the power of the Holy Spirit that is with us every single day. Amen. And so the thing is, is that so many people, and I grew up in a time in the church, many of you could say the same thing, where a lot of us, we look at somebody's struggle, and we're not in that struggle. And it's kind of like just trivial to us. So what we do is like, come on, man, snap out of it. Come on, you can, you can do this. 
Just be what you got to be. Believe what you got to believe. But we got to understand that there's so many that have not had the process built. We don't know who we are in Christ. The wrong foundation. People didn't love them. They hated them. They made fun of them. Or they told them who they weren't compared to who they were. And so we've got to understand that no matter what, these struggles don't just snap away. You don't just take a pill and get rid of it. Some of these struggles, you, can't, you don't eat more food. You know, it's not more sex, more money that's going to make it better. Come on, y'all. It's not, it's not having that, that, you know, those more telling everybody about it. It's not having more counsel. Because sometimes counsel can't counsel you out of that type of struggle. So, so how do we get free? We can have power in the middle of that. There are some things that don't free you like the power of the Holy Spirit. My goodness. So we understand the battle is real. But the good news is we have a real answer living on the inside of us every day. I want to read this scripture because I was reading this and, and I was so like taken. I, I told Pastor Trish, you got to read this. You got to see this. And so I want you to look with me on Romans chapter 15. If you're writing in your notes, Romans 15, 13. And look what the word says here. Woo. I'm taking time to build a foundation, y'all. Get this in your life. Amen. Romans 15, 13 says this. May the God of hope, hear this, fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him. Now here's, here's the kicker right here. So that you may overflow with hope. Oh, here it is. By the power of the Holy Spirit. That you will overflow with confidence. You will overflow with joy. You will overflow with the God kind of peace. Here it is. By the power of the Holy Spirit. What is this telling us? Guys, joy, peace, the hope that we need in the world is a power of the Holy Spirit thing. It's a power of the Holy Spirit thing. It's beyond that pill. It's beyond the counsel. It's beyond getting away. I just need to get away. I need to go to another town. No, it's just going to follow you to that other town. Where does joy that stays? Where is the peace that remains? Where is the hope that pushes us beyond the pressure into a place of strength? Where is it? Right here it says, it overflows with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Woo! Now look at this. Jesus said this in Acts 1.8. And he was referring to, he was about to be, um, he was already resurrected from the dead. And all the, the, the disciples were meeting together. And the greatest transition that was about to hit the world, which was Pentecost. That would ever hit the world. Which, what was that? When Jesus would be exalted to the right hand of God. And hear this. At that very moment, the Holy Spirit, what he was saying. The Holy Spirit would then come to live on the inside of every believer. Where now, where his presence isn't in some temple but we are the temple of God, the very Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ indwells us. The very hope of God's glory lives on the inside of us. Joy is resident. Peace is resident. Hope is resident by the power of the Holy Spirit. So that's about to happen. And look what Jesus says to his disciples. He's telling them, wait here, wait here, because this is about to take place. And look what he says, Acts 1.8. And you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. 
and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Again, this is again clarifying and confirming that when we accept Christ into our life, listen, it's not just, oh, I believe in Jesus. People of God, do you realize that you are receiving the power of the Holy Spirit to dwell on the inside of you? Woo! That gives you power over those things. Now, the world will say we need to accept each other. We need to show empathy, which I believe the church is getting better at now because of grace. We haven't showed that enough. We want to tell people where they're wrong, but we don't want to walk with them through grace. That's so critical. Amen? Um, So empathy and then show the word and then look at this. Here it is. We need to pray with the power of the Holy Spirit for our generation. Teach us like we're doing today. Don't just be... Don't be a practical belief. Just don't, you know, walk through your life and think that you 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 have to tolerate everything. Well, I'm a believer in Jesus. Yeah. Understand that you have the power to speak to that depression and say, I am not going to be depressed, but the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, I thank you for joy. Holy Spirit, I thank you for peace. Holy Spirit, I thank you for hope beyond what I see, beyond what I'm feeling, beyond the the circumstances that I'm going through. It looks a little hopeless. It looks a little bit, you know, over my head. But when you begin to ask the Holy Spirit, and say, Holy Spirit, you're the helper. You are the one that reveals Christ. And you, I guarantee you, I learned this personally. As I begin to ask the Holy Spirit, I had the privilege of asking God, I want that gift even. I want the gift of the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues. And uh, if, interesting enough, I was going through a time uh, when I was a young man and I was, was uh I mean, serving Christ and doing it, you know. And But I hit this bumper, this like, it felt like the, real heaviness on me. And I had to go. I went to God. I remember kneeling down at my bed. And I knelt down. And I had received the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. And I knelt down. And I said, God, I'm praying. I'm, I'm, I'm sharing. I'm, you know, and I was all into what I was doing back then. To, to show this, but I was just like, God, you know, here I am, but I'm feeling this way. And the Holy Spirit, I heard him. It's one of those times that you just hear in your thoughts was so clear, and you know it's God. And he said, you haven't prayed in my spirit. You haven't prayed in the tongue that I've given you. So check this out. So I said, oh, my God. I started thinking, wow, I haven't been praying in the Holy Spirit. And so I said, Lord. Okay, here. I, so I just I I went down and I begin to pray and release those tongues. Begin to release, and no no kidding. There came a wind like this this breeze just begin to flow in my room. <laughs> to this day, I remember running to tell you, my gosh, guess what just happened? And this thing, and I felt the refreshing, just an overflow. And I looked because the air wasn't on. I knew that. And I looked at my window because I'm like, well, where did it come from? Shoot. And it was totally closed. There was nobody in there, no fan on. I knew that that was the presence of God that came in at that moment as I began to pray. And, and I remember that moment there came a shift in my life where I began to realize this part, to realize that, God, I have power, and I'm sorry if I haven't used that gift. I'm sorry if I haven't, you know, asked your help. I've just kind of believed the worst, or, or I just tolerate things. I just accept things. And God showed me at an early time, and even to this day now, that when we're under pressure, you can ask the Holy Spirit for help. Jesus said it right here. Do you read it with me? He's the great help. He's the helper. Say this today, Holy Spirit. Say, Helper, I accept you. I accept your voice. I accept your work. I accept peace. 
I accept hope. I accept joy beyond what this world can give me. But by the power of you, your work in me, teach me how to trust you. Teach me how to receive more. How to live from that power. In Jesus' name, say amen. Let's give God a great big thank you today. I have more. We're going to go in there. We're going to continue to grow because I want to teach you what this means. So I want to challenge us in this. Although struggle is common to man, what's more common to us as believers is the power of the Holy Spirit to overcome every weakness, every oppression, trauma, You've been battling certain things in your mind that nobody understands. Let me tell you something. God understands it. Remember last week I was telling you my own testimony. That there were things that were going on and I couldn't quite, just if I, if I tried to explain to somebody, I couldn't explain what I was feeling, what I was going through. And, and even to God. And so I just stopped and I said, God, you know that thing when that thing happens? You know that feeling? You know that struggle? And I started calling those things out. I called them the that things to God. And you know what? Before you knew it, as I begin to thank God, Lord, I thank you. Next time, Holy Spirit, remind me. Give me more self-control. Holy Spirit, stop me right before I say that. Stop me before I act that way. And I'm telling you, God is so faithful. He will help you. He is the great helper. He is the one that powers us to do what God has called us to do, y'all. You are not without the tools on the inside of you. And so today, I'm just going to leave it at that, and I'm going to pray with you today, but I'm going to get it. We have Father's Day next week. I'm excited. I have a specific word for us. Come bring your fathers, grandfathers. We have uh, gifts for your dads. We want to celebrate you, and I have a word for us as fathers. And then the week after that, we're going to continue to talk about the power of the Holy Spirit. There are so many incredible things you got to know. Are you ready for this? Are you ready to grow? Are you ready, YouTube? I know y'all at at the house. Give somebody a high five around you. Come on. Give somebody some love. Bless them. Say, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. I'm ready. Let me pray with you before we go today. It's always such a privilege. It's always a great privilege to be able to teach the Word and to give you the Word of God right here. You're never going to get anything that is outside the truth of Scripture. And when you come here, you're always going to, your foundation is always going to be built. Jesus is always going to be lifted. And you will always receive grace no matter what you're going through. We want you to know that we love you. And we want to be there. If you're in a struggle, we want to walk you through to victory. So many testimonies in this church already of where they were compared to where they are today. Wow. Amazing grace. Amen. Because that's how God operates. So, Father, right now we thank you. For everyone in this house today, and I pray and I thank you for everyone online, all those that are online. Holy Spirit, we ask your help. Holy Spirit, I ask you to begin to cause your voice to be heard above the other voices. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would draw, that you would lead, that you would reveal, that you would teach us the ways of God, that you would show us how to respond. You would show us how to process. You would remind us of the promises of God, that there are yes and amen to those who believe. If there is, those of you 
that are sick in body today, I want to come in agreement with you right where you are physically. So if you're facing obstacles physically and you want to see a difference there, I want to come in agreement. If that's you, just simply raise your hand right where you are and I want to agree with you in prayer. I see that hand, I see that hand, that hand, that hand. Anybody else? Thank you. Amen. Thank you. I see your hand. All right. So let me agree with you. The Bible said if two or three agree touching anything in the name of Jesus, it shall be done. That's the Bible. So let's ask the Holy Spirit to help in this. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're going to quicken this, quicken their bodies. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, we thank you, that when you died, we died. When you rose, we rose from the dead. And therefore, our bodies are healed by the stripes of Jesus. Our bodies are healed by the resurrection power of the Holy Spirit. And so right now, I command everyone that lifted up their hand today, even those that are online right now, lift your hand where you are. God, I release your power to touch bodies right where they are, healing in Jesus' name. I lose healing in the name of Jesus. That's right. If you're sitting next to someone with their hand raised, lay your hands on them, on their shoulder, and just say this, say this. Say, in Jesus' name, say, in Jesus' name, I speak healing. I speak a full recovery. Say, in Jesus' name, the power of the Holy Spirit reveal and heal this body in the name of Jesus. Let's give God a great big shout of thank you today. Thank you, God. Thank you for that. And I want to encourage you, those that we just prayed for, begin to do things you didn't do. And remember, sometimes miracles happen immediately. But then there's healing that happens progressively. We start to see it happen like manifest as you begin to walk it out. We see that in Scripture. There were some that were healed, and then there were some that Jesus said, now go walk it out. And as they did, they were healed. It manifest. So we receive that as done, Father. Thank you in Jesus' name. Y'all love you. Thank you for coming today. Grace happens here. Grace happens in us and through us. All right, y'all. God bless you. Have a great day.